with Arethia and Ross about Broward County's fleet and transit electric vehicles and uh, I'm gonna send it over to Ashley who's gonna moderate the discussion between them. My name is Ashley and I'm an environmental planning and outreach specialist with Broward County's AIR program. Today I have two very special guests with me. They are going to briefly introduce themselves and then we'll jump right into some questions. So take it away. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Aretha Douglas. I'm the acting, the acting assistant general manager for capital programs. I also manage the electric bus program for Barrow County Transit and also the bus rapid transit program for Barrow County Transit. Perfect. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ross Meslin. I'm the director for the fleet services division in the transportation department and uh, I don't have a long list of things that I do like Aretha, but uh, we, we do a lot over here. I promise. Thank you both so much again for taking the time to join us. So this first question is for both of you. We would like to know what the benefits of electric vehicles are, not just for our communities, but also for the environment. Well, I'll take that um, and then Ross, I'm sure, will add his benefits on his side. So my involvement for Barrow County Transit is with the fleet, um, our fixed route fleet that serves um, the entire Broward County, we're moving towards 100% electrification. And we've started that initiative with the purchase of 12, 12 new 40-foot um, buses that will replace diesels. Um, we're starting with our Route 22. Those buses are, will be delivered in July of this year. So the benefits, reduce um, the carbon footprint, um, provide a vehicle that's more environmental, fr environmental friendly. We're expanding our service um, here in Broward County on the Resurtex program. And as part of that, as we increase um, the, the fleet, we're going to be replacing electric buses to offer a more cleaner, quieter um, environment for, right, for the riding public as they travel public transit um, in the county. Okay, well, uh, you know, I, I, I did some research on uh, how many barrels of oil we use a day as a nation. Uh, 18.12 million barrels a day, 6.63 billion barrels a year. Uh, it's a staggering number. Um, you know, the benefits that I, you know, believe that this is going to have is, is not going to just be an environmental um, you know, savings as far as the quality of our air and environment, um, you know, but ultimately our, uh, we're going to reduce our dependence on, uh, you know, any supplier of oil and the economic impact uh, I think is going to be, uh, you know, great for the individual, a reduced cost for transportation overall. Um, you know, and I really believe that we're, we're going to get there right now. Obviously, there's a a big gap between internal combustion engine vehicles, their cost and, and you know, battery electric vehicles. But but that gap is shrinking every year and that te technology is improving and it's an exciting time to be in this industry. Yeah, wonderful. That was a very thorough answer from both of you. Thank you. Uh, these next couple questions are for Arethia. So in 2019, I know that there were some electric bus tests done in order to determine a vendor. So can you summarize that process of selecting a final vendor for us, as well as explain the criteria that you used to do so? Sure. Um, what we wanted to do um, was to take a look at the different manufacturers of electric buses to see how the bus would function and operate here. We, we put an RFP request for information out and had several bus manufacturers respond to that. We then um, put criteria in place. We wanted a 40 foot bus. We needed an articulated bus. We wanted a bus with a particular range, um, a bus that can go on 100% state of charge up to about 180 miles um, in our climate. We did the demo um, in some in the summer months to see how they would operate in, um, in our temperatures. Anywhere from 90 to 100 is what we saw. 
So we tested that and when we have a bigger rain events, you know, those flash flood events in the um, in the afternoons. So we wanted to see how they performed with range, how they performed in the rain, how they performed with in the, in the higher temperatures. We we then those were some of our criteria that we set. But the most important of the criteria for us is range because we're looking to see how close we can come to a one to one replacement um, with one electric bus to one diesel bus. So those are some of the um, the main requirements that we set. So we had four manufacturers bring vehicles in and we tested from June to October and had very surprising results. Some unfortunately we had to tow a few vehicles that had issues with um, water intrusion, getting water into the electrical components of the vehicle, which that was of course one of our checklist items. Um, the vendor we selected had no issues and performed the best, um, the highest range and the more efficient. Um, the key for us here, especially in the summer months, is the draw on the HVAC system. It's a huge issue for us here um, in South Florida, so that was one of our criteria. So we selected the vendor that performed the most efficiently and, um, and gave us the highest range um, out of the vendors that, that did perform or did choose to um, demonstrate their vehicle here in Barry County. Perfect, thank you. And if I can ask you to, so I know that you touched on some criteria already, like you said, the most important one being range. Uh, we would also like to know if there would be any changes in routes, uh, seating capacity, and things like air conditioning as well, since that is very important, like you said, um, in here in Florida, as far as taking temperature into account. Well, what we've done as part of our program, we've hired a consultant to assist with some modeling. We have federal funds, so we were successful in getting um, the low emission grant from the federal government. And as part of that grant, we did some modeling. So we looked at our route structure. We modeled that. We modeled charge um, capacity. We looked at our, our facilities to see how we could implement the infrastructure. Um, so that vendor and the consultant has been great in modeling our routes. Our intent is not to modify our route structures, but to find a way to replace one for one, one diesel for one electric bus, especially because of the cost. It's the cost factor is about 2.5 times the cost for one diesel bus versus an electric bus. So our goal is to um, is to try to achieve that one to one replacement. Now to do that, we're we're also going to have on route charging. We're going to put fast chargers at various points along the route. Then we'll charge the bus, we'll supplement the charge and hopefully can have the, the buses in service on that route for the entire span of the service for that day. Seating capacity will not be impacted. The number of seats won't be reduced. Um, it's, a, it's a similar style and design to our typical diesel buses. So we'll still maintain the same seating capacity on that. Air conditioning needs doesn't change what we have to. The needs are the same regardless of electric or diesel. What we have to manage for the electric buses is the efficiency of that unit and how much of that pop, that battery it uses. So the vehicle, and that's why that demo was so important for us, because the, 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 the bus that performs most efficiently draws less of the battery. Um, so that's a challenge for us and something that we'll monitor as we go towards 100% electrification. Um, lifespan of the batteries. Typically a battery lasts anywhere from five to six year, years. What we've done is added a mid cycle replacement as part of our purchase. So at year number six, we'll see how efficient the battery's been, um, how it's performing. At that at that point, we'll look to replace the batteries with new batteries that can continue operating um, up to the 12 year asset life of, of a typical bus. Um, time to charge the vehicles we're in. We're putting in fast chargers at our garages and the on route chargers I mentioned earlier. Um, we have 660 kilowatt batteries and our charges are about 150 kilowatts. So that average is about um, three and a half to four hours in our garage. We're doing, going to do some smart charging in our garage. So we're going to try to charge our vehicles in off peak time of the day 
to kind of save on the electric charges. So our program encompasses all of those elements to kind of seamlessly provide um, the service that we provide in Broward County. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, I have one last question for you, Aresia. When can we expect to see these electric buses on the road? We're all excited to watch I it. I am so excited to say that our first bus will pull in July 14th. 2021, we are close. We've ordered 12 and the first of the 12 arrives on the 14th of July with the last coming in on August 18th. Once we have all the vehicles here, we're going to put those on our Route 22. The Route 22 services, Broward Boulevard between the BT, which is at Andrews Avenue, to the Sawgrass um, Mall. We, we're excited. Um, to get these lessons into service so the, the residents of Broward County can start enjoying the benefits of an all-electric bus. Wonderful. Yes, that's very exciting. We're looking forward to it. Thank you again, Arethia. Definitely. And these next few questions are for Ross. So what is the need for a Broward County fleet and who uses these vehicles? So the, the need is for uh, service delivery to the citizens of Broward County um, and who uses these vehicles, every single agency uh, within the county to include some constitutional officer um, agencies, uh, even some state agencies. Uh, so, you know, Broward Health uh, is a state agency. We uh, work with them to provide their vehicles and, and their maintenance and repair services. Um, you know, all told, uh, between all of the agencies, we have 3,500 assets out there uh, that are, you know, providing services to the citizens every single day. Wonderful. Thank you. And so how many vehicles are there in the fleet total? Of those, how many are electric? Sure. So, um, you know, we kind of have the fleet segmented out into vehicle types and, and asset categories. So of the 3,500, that includes everything. That's, um, you know, minibuses, tractor trailers, construction equipment, mowers, side-by-side um, -side utility carts, uh, and down to the light autos. And in the light auto category, and, and we consider anything that is an F450 or equivalent and below a light auto, um, that represents a little over 900 vehicles in that 3,500. So you can see that we have a lot of equipment, a lot of medium heavy duty trucks in the fleet. You know, we have a lot of construction groups, a lot of, you know, larger activities going on that uh, unfortunately a light auto just wouldn't be well suited for, but for all the administrative purposes, those light autos and even some of the lighter duty um, construction tasks, um, the, the light autos fit those roles. Uh, of those 900 assets, uh, about 20 of them today are electric. Uh, we're planning on purchasing an additional 17 in fiscal year 21. And then that number is just gonna kind of slowly grow over time to eventually encompass all 900 of those assets and um, you know, by 2030, that is the plan. That is what we've committed to. Perfect. Yes, thank you. That that was more than one question in one. So I thank you for <laughs> answering. No, no, that's good. Uh, that was the last. That was the last of it. Is if there is a plan to transition to an all electric fleet, and you said by 2030, roughly. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, so, uh, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we face is uh, having the chargers where the vehicles are going to be uh, warehoused. Um, you know, we, we have, you know, kind of two schools of thought on that, that, oh, well, you need X number of chargers and we have big parking lots here, here and here. Uh, it would be much more cost effective to just plop a bunch of chargers at these locations. But then, you know, as Arethia pointed out, even a bus takes three to four hours to charge. Um, these vehicles take a very similar time frame, so five to six hours um, on a, a level two charger. And uh, I won't go into all the differences and nuances of DC fast charging and <laughs> level, level two, but um, you know it's it's a good middle of the road charger um, that's a good value and still allows us to charge the vehicles in a reasonable time frame. Uh, but still, you don't want somebody having to drive a vehicle to a parking area. Um, you know, and, and waste 
really taxpayer money in driving because every hour that an employee is is here working, you know, that money came from someplace. It came from the taxpayers. Uh, so we, we want to have this uh, be something that is seamless, easy for the customers, wherever they park the vehicle every night, that's where we want that charger to be located. Uh, and we have hundreds of locations in the county that we're looking at right now to potentially install chargers at. Uh, and that that is a huge challenge, but we have to have the chargers there before we can buy the vehicles. So it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit of the chicken and the egg going on, but uh, but we're working the problem. The county has uh, committed $11 million over the next five years to installing that electric vehicle charging infrastructure just for county vehicles. Um, that doesn't count any additional resources that they've provided to encourage, um, you know, citizens and businesses to adopt electric vehicle, um, electric vehicles and charging at their, their own facilities and at their uh, places of residence. Of course, yes, thank you. And it sounds like you're taking everything into consideration uh, so that the appropriate steps are taken, but it's an exciting concept to be able to see more fleet vehicles, more electric fleet vehicles down the line. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, again, I wanted to sincerely thank you both for taking the time to speak to us. You answered our questions so thoroughly uh, and were extremely informative. So thank you so, so much again, and we're looking forward to hearing from you both more in the future. You're welcome. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. All right, everyone, that is it for our Car Care Month discussion with Broward County Fleet and Transit. We sincerely hope that you enjoyed watching. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave a comment and we will be sure to relay your inquiries to Fleet and Transit. Thanks so much again for tuning in. Bye.